Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday, the Sierra got the snow. Let's go to uh, Palisades Tahoe first. Now this is up at the top, the Siberia cam up there. I mean, they definitely got several inches of snow accumulation up there. Um, that's again up at the top. Let me show you what it looks like. So there's 8,200 feet snow there. Now this is down at the base at 6,200 feet there at Palisades Tahoe. Looks like they're still getting some waves of snowfall moving in and out, but that clearly shows you that snow level came all the way down to about 6,200 feet there across uh, Tahoe. Let me take you into Colorado. So now we have three resorts that are making snow during the nighttime hours. Arapahoe Basin, Loveland, and also Keystone. Um, so there, and then of course there may be others. There's always a bit of a race to see who opens first and it may happen in October given the pattern that we're in and what is, uh, coming at us in the, uh, in the forecast. So again, that's Arapahoe Basin. You can kind of see those little areas of white there where they're, they've just started. Let me refresh this camera. So this is down in Telluride again at the regional airport. Uh, notice it looks like a little bit of action trying to sneak in there, but you've got some 14ers over here. Um, and clearly you can see some of the snow cover up above 13,000 feet there. But uh, so far it is uh, dry down and tell you right. All right, let's go to radar here across the west. So it's really a combination still, but really the, the area of low pressure is taking over. The, the remnant tropical moisture from Raymond has now kind of moved on. And now it's more about this this area of low pressure right here, you can see the return flow bringing moisture from uh, south to north into parts of Utah. And there's still some wraparound moisture there across Lake Tahoe um, above 6,000. And it looks like there's some moisture up there. That might be a little bit of that remnant moisture in Montana from what was uh, Raymond. Let me take you into uh, California. Again, this is definitely cold enough to see this snow right here uh, flowing across uh, a lot of uh, Lake Tahoe. Um, up at Mount Rose, down to Palisades, and um, down to Kirkwood, potentially seeing some of that snow. We had most of the snow in the southern Sierra um, yesterday and last night, uh, but I know that uh, a lot of those areas got hammered with one to two feet of snow above 12,000 feet um, down there. One more stop. This is in Utah, seeing a mix of rain and snow, depending on your elevation. You know, that down in south, uh, southern Utah, seeing some uh, snow at the higher elevations, mainly rain up here across Salt Lake, but there is a chance of snow, a little bit of snow across uh, the Wasatch today and also the High Uintas and probably a continuing chance into tomorrow. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything big, but as this slides through, you will have uh, a chance of some snowfall there. Here are my bullet points, so here's what I'm expecting. So we talked about uh, the storm system today. Um, the snow levels in Colorado generally above 11,000. In Utah, it'll start at about 10, and then the levels are going to drop all the way down to about 7,500 feet. So that's going to encompass a lot of territory there across the Wasatch as time goes on. Uh, and then we're going to end. Uh, we're then we're for a series of very fast-moving, windy, cold fronts. That's how I think this period's going to play out between 10, 17, and 18, one front, and then another windy front, 10, 19, and 10, 20. Both of those are pretty fast moving, so I don't expect a ton of snow out of those. I think they're going to run down through parts of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. They may clip Utah and Colorado on their way through. In fact, they're the best odds of snowfall there and through Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. Interior BC has an extended period of precipitation uh, chances, 1017 all the way through 1022, but you'll have to be at high elevations to get snowfall out of that. Here's the uh, the water vapor satellite imagery um, this morning, and again, you're looking at moisture in the middle of the atmosphere, the oranges, the reds, the black colors, that's going to be where your drier air is. The moisture is right there, and that's with our area of low pressure. The whites, the blues, that's going to be your moisture. Still a little bit of leftover, just a tiny bit of moisture from Raymond. And then you've got the next storm system cruising into the Pacific Northwest um, up there. Um, so let's talk about the, the, the forecast radar and the, uh, the satellite here. Let me load this in. So again, this is what the, the forecast radar will show in the future. So we'll start this up at uh, lunchtime today, uh, Wednesday, October 15th. And what do you see? 
Um, there's our area of low pressure, and you can see it's pulling in precip out ahead of the storm system, and there's probably some of that remnant moisture from Raymond. All right, moving this ahead. Um, so there's dinner time today. There's dinner time, and that's the chance of rain and snow over Utah, a little bit over Colorado, Idaho, Montana, seeing rain and snow. All right, let's move into tomorrow morning. So here we are early tomorrow on Thursday, October 16th. Now, there's some pretty heavy precip. Look at the greens and the uh, the yellows indicating heavier, heavier batch, a more intense level of precipitation right there, all in Wyoming and Montana. And some of that's going to be snow for sure up there in uh, Wyoming and Montana. All right, there we are lunchtime on Thursday. There's the dinner hour. The low is moving away. Now we refocus on what's next. So there's early Friday. There's lunchtime on Friday. There's dinner time on Friday. Kind of a quiet period. Um, let's go into early. So this is early on Saturday. Now we start to watch because we're going to see a, like two fast moving cold fronts. And you can see the first one up here loading up. That one's going to race down through the interior between 19 and 20. And then there's going to be another one that comes in fast uh, behind that. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the forecast for atmospheric pressure anomalies to show you where the highs and the lows are. So there's our current setup for today with the area of low pressure that will track up in this direction towards these higher pressures up there. Um, now this is a forecast for Saturday the 18th. So at this point um, on the 18th, a couple of things to note. So there's our area of low pressure. And but look at the flow here. See how it's starting to angle down out of the west-northwest? So we're going to start to see these fast-moving cold fronts ride that flow down out of the Pacific Northwest and the northern tier. That's what's really going to be the setup between 1019 and probably 1023. And look down here. It looks like we've got an area of tropical low pressure. That is likely to get drawn into the flow. I know it's hard to believe that that's going to happen again, but it looks like it will happen again. In fact, here's Monday the 20th, just a couple of days beyond that. Look at the pattern. Big cold front right here, area of low pressure, and that's going to be blasting its way through um, the northern tier and parts of the Rockies. There's our tropical low. Some of that moisture will likely get drawn in. Another area of low pressure over the Carolinas. Um, so in Colorado, here's the time height forecast. Slice through the atmosphere. This is for Loveland Ski Area over the next three days. We'll start down here, that's the current day, and then it work, you work your way into the future going in that direction. And what I'm looking for is the green. That's your moisture, that's your higher relative humidities in the atmosphere. And there's a slight uptick for Loveland Ski Area, the Front Range High Peaks of Colorado, this afternoon, tonight, and into tomorrow morning. So if we see any snowfall over the High Peaks in Colorado, it's probably gonna be this afternoon, tonight, into tomorrow morning. Doesn't look heavy. It's probably a dusting uh, over most peaks. Could it be a couple of inches? It could. Um, and then much drier air moves in after that slides through. Um, let's look at the five-day snow forecast. So this runs us out five days, and look at where the heavy snow is. Wyoming, parts of Montana. Um, up the When you see the purples and the pinks, that's over six inches. So that's high Uintas. Uh, a little bit of leftover snow near uh, Tahoe. And then the big stuff, look at this, up here in the BC. I mean, and that's going to fall during that extended period that I talked about where it's like a five-day period where we're going to see some pretty significant overrun into that area uh, from storm systems that are moving in there. And so all that precip will just overrun that area. A little bit of snowfall in Colorado, and we'll definitely take a look at that in the, uh, the forecast coming up. Um, let me show you what that could look like. So in Jackson, Wyoming, showed you this yesterday. This is the extended snow forecast. This ensemble generates about 10 inches through October 30th. So this looks all the way out through the end of October. So you've got a surge of snow coming right there. Looks like 15, 16, 17. Another little bump, 2021, 20, and then another bump, 25, 26, 27. So first storm system, and then it followed by about two cold fronts and snow all the way down to the valley floor. So we're not talking about snow. This is not at some very high elevation, obscure area like Rendezvous or, or, or Cody Bowl. This is down in town. So it's going to be cold enough for snow all the way down in town here coming up. Um, 
Let's look at the plume coming out of Berthoud Pass. So this is your snow plume for Berthoud Pass in Colorado. This is up at about 11, 12,000 feet. This generates about six, six, uh, six and a half inches of snow by October 30th, but the error bars suggest it could be more. So we'll have to wait and see. Depends on, of course, the track of these storms. Um, but you've got a bump coming 18, 19, 20, maybe 21, and then another little bump there around 26, 27, 28, 29, Halloween. That's not unusual to see that that uptick around Halloween in Colorado. So that's Berthoud Pass. Um, let me zoom in on some of the snow maps. So you saw the five-day snow for the uh, the west. Let me zoom into Wyoming, Montana, parts of Utah and Colorado. So again, anywhere you see the purples and the pinks, that's over six inches. In many cases up here, across parts of the Wind Rivers, maybe the very highest Tetons, but up in Yellowstone, the Bighorns, that's six to 12 inches of accumulation up there. You've got over six in southwest Montana. The high Uintas have potentially over six, maybe up to six over the Wasatch in Colorado. You might have a couple of pockets of six inches there um, in the forecast. In fact, let's zoom in to Colorado and take a look at that. So your five-day snow forecast, again, a couple of pockets of six inches, definitely less indicated here south of I-70 and a bit more north of I-70 up in the mountains. Again, this is only a five-day forecast. If we looked out beyond this, we would start to see a couple of small chances for snow all the way down into Denver. Once I think we get past about the 21st or the 22nd, we might start to see that snow level come down with some colder air for the front range of Colorado. Certainly once we get closer to, uh, to uh, Halloween, I think that's probably going to be some of the best odds for the first snow. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.